uh, uh, hi everyone. Uh, so today's session is regarding Graal VM. Uh, so the top uh, the heading is a step ahead of JVM. So we all know JVM. It's an old friend of us, right? Uh, we are uh, we were uh, running our applications on on this platform for a long time, right? Uh, so uh, in this session uh, presented by Sakshi and me, uh, we'll uh, have a quick overview about Graal VM. What are the benefits that we are getting out of it, right? Why? I mean, this is something. Uh, uh, this is something like a change, right? And why do we need to change? This is something that we are uh, going to look at. Uh, what are the benefits we are getting out of it? What are the use cases that we, we should be using? What are the pros and cons of Graal VM? Uh, as a developer, uh, why we should consider using Graal VM going ahead, right? So these are the uh, quick points that, that will be touched upon in this session. Right. I hope uh, that everyone is. Uh, uh, I hope to everyone participate, ask questions if any, right, and uh, reach out to us uh, if you want to know more. Yeah. That's that's really great, Vimal. Thanks. So it's already three thirty, and I would request you both to please start the session. Yes. Okay. Uh, sorry, sure. Yes. Thank you, Vimal. So good afternoon, everyone. Today, me and Vimal are going to present a session on GraalVM, and uh, you all have already heard about what we are going to present in this session. It's about the pros and cons of using GraalVM over the traditional JVM, and we'll walk, we'll take a demo as well to see the uh, very interesting performance comparison between both of them, and we'll see how we can use GraalVM to see how we can make our applications perform better. So let's move uh, to some knowledge etiquette. So before starting up the session, let's see. Uh, number one, please uh, be punctual and it is suggested to join the session five minutes prior to the start time. Second, it is a humble request from us to submit a constructive feedback as it's very helpful for the presenter. Thirdly, please keep your mobile devices in silent mode or feel free to move out of the session in case you have an urgent call. Lastly, please avoid any disturbance and unwanted chit chat during the session. So moving forward, let's see what's the agenda for today's session. First of all, we'll go through the introduction of GraalVM. Then moving forward, we'll see the features of GraalVM. Then we will see a very interesting comparison between JIT and AOT, that is just-in-time compiler and ahead-of-time compiler. Then we will see that if uh, then we'll see what is Spring with AOT. Then definitely with uh, pros, there comes Pons as well. So we'll have a brief uh, description of pawns of GraalVM as well. And finally, we will move swiftly towards the demo of Gra uh, using GraalVM with our Java app Spring Boot application. And then we'll see a very interesting comparison between performance comparison of JVM and AOT. So this was the agenda for today's session. Moving forward, let's go and de uh, dive deep into introduction to GraalVM. So first of all, uh, let's see what is GraalVM actually. So it is nothing uh, different than your traditional JDK. So it is normally a simple a JDK which can be used as both uh, as your traditional JDK as well as GraalVM. So you can imagine GraalVM as uh, something built up above the traditional JDK with enhanced uh, enhanced uh, features which can uh, enhance your java application performance so uh, also it consumes fewer resources so we'll see a detailed description about uh, how it is uh, using uh, res fewer resources as compared to standard jdk's so uh, other than that uh, we have Gra uh, Graal compiler. So for Graal compiler, it is not only uh, limited to uh, the ahead of time compiler. It has both. That is JIT compiler as well as AOT compiler. So uh, you are not limited to use just one compiler if you are using GraalVM as the JDK. 
but you are open to use both as per your requirements. Then comes uh, polyglot ca capabilities. So uh, I want to ask uh, a question here. Is anyone aware of uh, what is polyglot programming? Uh, is anyone aware of polyglot programming? Uh, yeah, polyglot means like we can use multiple languages, like uh, the platform that supports multiple languages. Right. So, uh, how polyglot programming is a feature of GraalVM? Can you explain that? Any one of you, if you know about that. How is it different? from traditional JDK, how it is uh, a feature feature of GraalVM. Anyone? OK, so I'll take this as a rule. So I'll explain it to you. So uh, for example, you have your basic Spring Boot application or Java application or and you have uh, components in which you uh, at one place you have done Java programming and then to some components you have used JavaScript, right? So it will make your application as a polyglot application, right? Then if you use your tra traditional or regular JDK or JVM, you will uh, need a separate engine to run your JavaScript program or code. But when you use GraalVM, you don't have to have another separate a separate engine to run your JavaScript code. So polyglot pro, uh, capabilities are here in GraalVM that allows you to run your uh, Java application or polyglot application in just a uh, one uh, one go you don't need any other engine or any other separate engine it supports multiple languages including javascript ruby python etc and then uh, coming to reduced attack surface so we'll also see this in detail in further slides as of now we i we can just understand that whenever you compile your program using GraalVM, it doesn't use unused classes methods and fields from the application binary then uh, finally, extended JVM capabilities. So it offers new performance optimizations and capabilities beyond standard JVM implementations. So now that we have basic understanding of what is GraalVM, so can anyone um, answer me what do you understand by this diagram that you see here? Anyone? Okay, so uh, as I explained earlier, that when you use GraalVM, you are not limited to uh, using AOT only. You can use either ju just in time compiler or ahead of time compiler. Can anyone tell me the basic difference between JIT or JIT and AOT? If anyone knows, just a one line comparison. OK, so I'll take that as a no. So for, uh, when I'll tell you the simple one line comparison between both so just in time compilation is done at runtime and when it comes to aot ahead of time compilation it is done on at the build time so this is the very very basic difference between git and aot moving forward let's see how GraalVM uh, creates a native image or native executable so first of all, let's take a simple example of a Spring application probably. So when you 
run your Spring application or when you try to create a native image or new native executable. So it simply takes your application, your libraries, JDK, Substrate VM as the input and it starts compilation. So here we are uh, seeing a term point to analysis. Is anywhere, anyone aware of this term point to analysis? Okay, so I'll explain what is point to analysis. So as I mentioned in my first slide that whenever you compile your program or spring application using Graal VM, it does not take the unused methods or classes or any dependencies. Suppose your spring application in your spring application, you have defined 100 dependencies. So it will not compile all of them. It will compile only say if you are using 30 of them. It will only compile that part of your program. Only it will only take those dependencies which are in use. Similarly, it will only whenever you try to create a native image using GraalVM, it will only analyze the code or methods or classes which are re reachable and used. So in turn, uh, it increases the sp startup time. So next is run initialization. Once everything is compiled, then run initialization and finally heap snapshot. So uh, is anyone aware of what is heap snapshot? I mean, it's not uh, related, entirely related to Graal VM only. Heap snapshot is a common term, if anyone knows. Okay, so what happens is when you create a native image using AOT compilation, so everything happens at the build time only. No runtime compilation is there. So uh, if we compare uh, JIT compilation and AOT compilation. In JIT compilation, uh, we do get to know about things that needs to be done at runtime. But when you are build, uh, compiling your application using AOT compilation, it works on assumption basis. Like we need this much space. We could need this much space when uh, we are running our application. So Heap snap, what heap snapshot is, it divides the space according to the uh, assumption and it uh, does not wait for the runtime to allocate uh, memory. It will allocate memory in the build time only. So this is how finally your native executable will be created, right? So moving ahead, let's come to features of GraalVM. So we have uh, six major features of GraalVM. First of all, fast startup and scale. As we, as I am, as I have already mentioned in my previous slides, that when you compile your application using AOT compiler, it will compile everything on the build time only, uh, build stage only. So it will save a lot of startup time for you. Then uh, next is low resource usage. So we have a demo coming up in this session. In that in uh, in that demo, you will be able to see how less resource is used uh, when you are comp uh, compiling your application using GraalVM. Thirdly, improved security. So improved security, as I mentioned, that it does not compile any unused code or unreached code. So JIT attacks are very much avoided because there is no JIT when you comp uh, compile your pro application using GraalVM. Also, uh, uh, you don't get the facility of uh, reflections in GraalVM. Like it's it's subject to explicitly configuring that uh, feature. If you want that feature in your application, you will have to explicitly uh, configure that. 
so uh, it will not try to break your code or read any methods that are abstracted so that is how it provides improved security to you then fourth compact packaging so compact packaging is when you create a whole Im native image of your application it is a very small uh, in size so that's how you achieve compact packaging next polyglot programming as i explained you earlier that we do get a really nice feature of polypro uh, polyglot programming in GraalVM since we do not need any other compilers or engines to compile other language codes we get uh, uh, the entire support in GraalVM only and lastly multiple framework support and uh, cloud support so this was all about features of GraalVM let's see a very interesting comparison between JIT versus AOT so fact, uh, factor one which is time of compilation so as I mentioned that the code is compiled just before execution during runtime and in ahead of time it compiles the code before runtime during the build phase so this is why we get a time difference of starting up our application then execution effi efficiency so JIT optimizes code based on runtime profiling and platform specific characteristics whereas AOT generates optimized native code upfront ensuring cons consistent performance from the start then uh, startup time as we know JIT may lead to longer startup times initially due to compilation overhead and in AOT, we don't get any compilation overhead at the runtime, and hence we get a faster st startup time. So dynamic code adaption. So as we know, as I uh, uh, explained you about heap snapshot. So in JIT, it dynamically optimizes code and uh, based on the runtime conditions and usage patterns. And when it comes to AOT, optimizations are fixed during compilation and cannot adapt dynamically at the runtime. So in this case, somewhere JIT is better than AOT since JIT can adjust itself according to the runtime conditions, but AOT cannot. And finally, deployment and distribution. Uh, JIT requires distribution, uh, distributing bytecode or intermediate code for compilation on user machines whereas AOT involves distributing pre-compiled native library binaries, simplifying deployment and ensuring consistency across environments. So this was all about the JIT versus AOT comparison. Do we have any questions on this? Uh, no questions. No questions. OK, let's move forward. So let's move to Spring with AOT now. So here we can see the difference between compiling your Spring Boot application using your regular JVM and then compiling your application by using GraalVM and creating a native image. So in the first circle you can see that Spring Boot runtime discovery and configuration. So what happens is if you uh, run your Spring Boot application uh, using your regular JVM, then it will uh, discover all your code configurations, dependencies and everything on the runtime. But when it comes to GraalVM uh, and when you try to build a native image of that, then it, it all of this is done during the build time all the code discovery what which code is uh, used uh, which code is unused which dependencies are not of any use the, the all these discoveries are made at the build time so uh, this was about spring aot and when you compile your spring boot application using GraalVM, it creates three things for you. First, it will create Java source files. So the Java source file which it creates are very much compatible by your machine, with your machine actually, and it makes it your uh, makes it 
according to your machine's uh, configuration. Second, it generates the bytecode. Thirdly, hint files. So what hint files actually are? So as I told you that uh, GraalVM works on assumption basis, right? We don't know actual conditions that we can get at the runtime. So it does create hint files for the same purpose. Next. So uh, this is uh, something that is very important to know. So this is cross platform builds on you on GitHub Actions. So uh, one of the biggest con I would say for GraalVM is when uh, you uh, suppose you are on a Linux machine, right? And you run your Spring Boot application and you compile it using GraalVM and you manage to create a good native image from that. And now you are trying to run that same native image on a Windows machine. There are huge chances that your native image will not work or it will behave uh, in an unexpected way. So this is the biggest one of GraalVM. Uh, the native image which is created, it will be platform dependent. It won't be able to run on every OS or machine, I would say. So it creates a native image according to your machine's configuration. Uh, yeah. So to overcome this con, we can use GitHub Actions. So you can choose any uh, CI CD uh, tool of your choice, and then you can. Uh, configure that pipeline to create your native image according to all these uh, machines. So that's how you can overcome this con. So let's move forward. Finally, coming to cons of GraalVM. So number one, longer build times. So as I explained you earlier about point to analysis, right? So it some uh, checks all your code. It uh, checks for all the used and unused code. It checks for all the dependencies and configurations and everything. So when you uh, compile your code and try to uh, build a native image, so it does take longer as compared to your standard JVM application. Right? Then secondly, maturity and stability. So GraalVM is relatively new as compared to your standard JVM, which may or may not result in stability issues. Thirdly, as I explained you in my previous slide, platform dependent, which happens to be a big con. So native compilation requires same machine configuration on which it is intended to be executed you will not be able to execute your native image on any other machine. It needs to be on the same configuration it, it has been created on. Lastly, controlled support for dynamic features. So dynamic class loading and reflection need explicit configuration to implement and optimize the native images. So you won't be able to get any dynamic class loading feature or reflection feature in, while you are using GraalVM as your uh, as your JVM, but you can explicitly configure it according to your requirement. So that's pretty much it for the theory part of GraalVM. Now Vimal will take you through the demo part of GraalVM and show you a, a very interesting performance and resource comparison. Over to you, with Vimal. Thank you, Sakshi. Uh, hey, everyone. So uh, up until now, we uh, heard uh, about why uh, we should be using uh, GraalVM. We've uh, looked at the features of uh, GraalVM, why uh, it, it, it is fast, right? Everything was said in this uh, uh, presentation, right? So let's see when we are saying it is fast, how fast it can be, right? So uh, let me share my screen. Um, no, screen. Let's do entire screen. 
so my uh, screen is visible right uh, yes yes it is okay so this is a very uh, uh, simple ap application uh, simple crud application which we uh, generally uh, create uh, it has uh, a very uh, one controller i guess uh, has only one controller and it has all the endpoints of get create put and delete right so uh, very simple application anyone can create it and run it right so what is the difference we are getting when we are running this in galvia right so if we look at our uh, configuration for this right and uh, configuration let me show you the configuration part here. Right. So uh, we are using uh, the yes. So in our SDKs, we are using Graal VM JDK, right? So uh, how can you do that? You can go to the official site of Graal VM and download this, uh, extract this, uh, download the zip file uh, and or tar or any version that you like. It has different versions of uh, Java as well. So we have uh, 17 and 22. So this particular application is running on 17, right? And then you can change your JDK home path uh so if you want to run it on a hotspot or something you can obviously go ahead and change that one right so like here i have jvms as well right if i want to run it in a uh, regular jvm instead of graal vm then i go and go ahead and use uh, the uh, whatever we had prior to graal vm so i'm using graal vm right and this is set in my uh, project as well okay so this is how I am currently utilizing GraalVM. Now uh, let's try to run this. So a couple of things that uh, we first do, right? So native image that was told, uh, and uh, first we need to understand what this term means. So native that means that it is very specific to your machine, right? So how do we create this native image? So all you need to do. I think my terminal is broken anyways. Uh, this is the command that we run to create our uh, uh, okay. Oof. Something is not right with my terminal. Anyways, I can run it from here, right? Okay, so what will this do? It'll quickly create a uh, image for me, right? So it, this is going to take some time. That's why when Sakshi was giving this presentation, right? She told us that uh, uh, this is, uh, sorry, this is something that uh, uh, takes time. It, it was part of the cons, right? So when this particular uh, command runs completely fine, you'll see uh, an image created here uh, by the name of your service, uh, by the name of your service, right? Product service. This is the name of this application, right? So I'll quickly show you. Uh, I'll run this application uh, from here, what we usually do during development, and then I'll I run this application using my uh, native image. Okay, so let's uh, start this one. Okay, it is started, right? And this is the time it took 4.183 seconds. This is because I've ran it a couple of times. That means uh, that's why it is uh, showing like this, this thing, right? 4.183 seconds it took. Okay, so, and if I go ahead and check this on my swagger, hopefully I have it. 
Okay, so it is running on 8081 and all the APIs are here. Now I'm going going ahead and uh, run it from my. So this is. Uh, so this is my image product service that I'm going to run now. This is a. Uh, um, uh, native image and I can simply run it like an executable from here and yes it is started and it took point zero point two four five seconds this is how fast it is right in here we it took four point one eight three seconds to start your application but here in, with a native image you have zero point two four point two four five seconds okay. So this is how fast uh, your application can be and this is this should be up on a different port right it is running on 8080 now to visualize this uh, in a, a better way we've configured uh, prometheus and grafana for uh, visualization of these matrices so this is the matrices uh, yeah so uh, this is the time taken by your uh, JVM based application, 4.18 seconds, what we just saw. And this is the time took by native image, 0 0.245 seconds, right? And it is showing how much class, how many classes were loaded at the time of initialization, right? So JVM loaded 15,828 classes when we were running it, right? That was the reason it took 4.18 seconds and native image, obviously, because everything is already built and compiled, right? That's the reason you see native image is loading zero classes because everything is already compiled for you. Right? And that's the reason it is already so fast. CPU usage, how much uh, memory uh, these two things are using. So JVM is currently uh getting 86 percent of cpu as compared to 14 percent of cpu that is cpu usage right uh, in terms of uh, uh how much utilization is around there right so uh this is a quick overview of uh, what uh, uh how a gralvium is uh, fast and startup in in this these types of uh, uh when we have everything's uh everything running in microservices, we need our services up fast and scale fast, right? That's, uh, that's one of the requirement for our applications, right? So, uh, sorry, I stopped sharing. Okay. So uh, here in the demo, uh, this is, uh, this is how you can build your POM XML, right? Uh, uh, these are in the slides we've already mentioned what what are the what, what should be the prerequisites to run this uh, demo, right? What are the dependencies that you have to include, right? How how you should be building your images, right? And this is a dashboard, uh, what I what I just shown you in Grafana. This is a glimpse of that. So when we uh, create use this first time, right? The, when the very first time this application was uh, started, started, it took 20.5 seconds for us. Okay. And, and with AOD, it was still very, very low in terms of startup time. Okay. You can see the JVM memory that is used by uh, JVM based application and AOD based application in, and also the CPU usage. Okay. So, yeah. Uh, this is pretty much it in terms of why we should be using a platform called uh, GraalVM, right? And uh, in terms of performance, you might have uh, seen uh, a difference. Uh, J JVM, when we talked about uh, the differences between J JIT and AOT, we said that uh, JIT can adapt itself uh, uh, based on the uh, number of, of requests a particular method is getting. Right, and uh, AOT is not that compact, uh, adaptable. 
but that can also be handled by profile based uh, initializations so when we are building our image of uh, GraalVM using GraalVM then we can tell our application that this is the profiling we already done on a JVM application and please build the image based on this profiling so it will have a significant improvement in its peak performance right uh, that uh, that will be very much uh, com uh, comparatively better than our GIT applications as well so this is a quick glimpse of uh, how you can set it up and the setup is very simple all you need to do is just extract the graal vm and uh, start using it if you want to create the native image just one plugin uh, for building the image native image and you can do it very easily everything is uh, mentioned in the slide we'll be sharing that slide with you all right and let us know if you have any questions Guys, do we have any questions? Anyone? Any questions? We still have time and we can have a healthy discussion, guys. And please don't forget that Vimal and Sakshi will also be nominating two of you as the Spotlight Nashers. Anybody, any questions? All right, if then I think we will. I mean, if, if there is any question, you can also uh, uh, come up with any uh, you know, correction that you might have seen, right? It's not that uh, we are expert in Graal VM. This is something that we've just started using. Uh, I'm hoping also uh, happy to you know hear any uh, corrections that we might have uh, need to do, right? So. Uh, we are uh, open for anything, yeah. Okay, so Marty, I think everyone got it. <laughs> uh, yeah, it was uh, yes, simple. Everyone. So, and yes, it is a very simple thing because it's not a very uh, uh, fancy thing. It's not a framework. It's just a platform on which your application can run uh, apart from your JVMs. Right, so uh, I hope you, that you guys uh, try to use this uh, new platform and uh, make your applications more faster and secure. Thank you. Right, right. Thanks, 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 Vimal, and thanks, Akshi, for the wonderful session. And thank you so very much, everyone, for attending the same. See you all soon in the next session. Thank you. <laughs>